Well, first of all, I have to admit, I don't know anything about technology. To me, it's all black magic. I mean, I have a hard time understanding how they put all this little information on tiny chips, and I even have a hard time spelling algorithm correctly. But I've come to understand that the mixture of the two of them, the combination of exponential computing power and intelligent algorithms actually will boost us to another dimension of human productivity. So I read all I could get about singularity, artificial intelligence, and so on. And I really think it's great, it's wonderful, it's a perfect world. It sounds like the land of milk and honey, where the robots do our work, and we all have girlfriends named Ziri. So actually, I mean, I could cut it off right here, it's all perfect. Maybe we should just leave it and go for the burgers right away. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's one more little thing I have to tell you. Unfortunately, I'm a German. And Germans tend to be a little bit more rational in the interpretation of the future. So I doubt it's going to be that easy. So I'm just wondering what we're all going to do when the software is done eating our jobs. So the point I'm trying to make is there are so many people, so many companies, so many jobs involved in this game, so that we should rather focus on the transformation of us instead of focusing all the time on the transformation of technology. I mean, seriously, how are we going to explain that to all the people out there? Are we going to just stand up and go like, ladies and gentlemen, your company is going to be disrupted soon. Tough luck, times change, and so does your job. Please move on and don't look back. Well, I doubt it's going to work that way. I mean, it's not the matrix where you can plug a switch into your head and download Transformation 101. I don't know if you ever try to explain digital transformation to the people out there. I don't mean in the tech world, I mean to the non-believers. That's what I tried in the last two years. I talked to my students about it. I talked to my clients, even friends and family. And you know what happened? When I started talking, they slowly moved backwards and backwards. And by the time I was finished, I was a pretty lonely guy out there. Because people just don't follow it. They, they, they react in different ways. I was actually, I felt like one of these guys in the subway station where they're preaching about the end of the world, holding up a cardboard bo a box like that and going like, this is the end of the world. Beware of the disruption ahead. So this is not the way it's going to work. I'm gonna, confront people like that with a change thing. So what I did, I tried to learn why they um, are behaving that way. And actually, I had three different per uh, types of people. The first group, they just you know, walked around me, body swerving around like that, and they went on, said, ah, yeah, software is going to eat my job. I'm an accountant. I will be an accountant in the future. They always need that. So that's the first type. The second type actually is more the poker face-like kind of guys. They just walk around, you know, smile at you and nodding and trying to understand and go like this. And then when you're out of sight, they go like, did you hear this guy? I mean, he's right, but I don't know how to do this. I'm really afraid. I got t 10 more years to go, so I just stay the way it is and don't tell anybody. So that's the second type. And there's a third one that's more the the John Wayne type of guy, they walk up to, straight like that to you and they pat you on the shoulder and they go like, calm down, kid. This valley you're talking about is so far away. I mean, I've been in this business for ages, for decades, and you're not going to tell me how to do my job. Just uh, calm down, take it easy. So you get the point. So the, the question is why the majority of the people out there are either, either ignorant, they're afraid, overconfident when we're talking about our future. So I first figured maybe it's the technology, maybe they're not comfortable with the te using the technology, but that's not the case. I mean, we've got more smartphones than toothbrushes out there. We got, everybody's got a smartphone, we are shopping with it, day and night, social media, so that's not the case. So in one of those lonely nights in the, in the subway station where I was alone, I had a lot of time to think, and it finally occurred to me why people um, continue to behave in a fashion that's likely to be unsuccessful in the future. 
There are only two possibilities. The first one is they are all crazy, which is probably not the case. And the second one is that there's an environment around us which actually supports and encourages such a behavior. So we should look at this environment for a second. So in our Western societies, we all are pretty much influenced by this middle-class intellectual way of thinking. And we all seem to know what a perfect career is going to look like, what how our life is going to be. And if you, for example, talk to parents, they all go like, of course I want my kids to be happy, but I want to have them a decent uh, education so they can have a good career. If you translate that, it's actually parents' code for, I want my kids to be well off. So what's on top of mind of most parents out there is financial security for their kids. And this is how we enter the system. We are all afraid of the old thing, I must go to college or I will end up as a garbage man. So take me as an example. I'm born and raised in what you might call a prototypical middle class intellectual family. It was always clear for me to go to college. I didn't know why. It was the best education there could be and that was the thinking. I didn't know what to do with my life whatsoever. So I stumbled into university and ended up in courses like, the first one was gender and genre, female crime literature in modern Great Britain. And the second one, this is actually my favorite, is rural drinking habits in northern Germany. <laughs> so I really had fun at university. It was a, a, it's a great, great system. It was like a drama group. The, the, the professors actually acted as if all this nonsense courses actually were useful for something later in life. And we, the students, we actually acted as if all this partying hard, going to the library to check on girls, handing in papers on, on this kind of nonsense was actually an education. So I really think that this system is broken. I mean, it's all focused on research, it's not on education. If you look at professors, professors are hired because they are great scientists, not necessarily because they're great educators. So the thing is, they design curricula that suit their academic needs and not the needs of their clients, the students. And then they all press it into a one-size-fits-all system, which uh, there's no difference between any subject at all. So I really think we need to change, we ch change that. The, this system is broken. The value proposition cannot be information anymore. It has to be transformation. Transformation in the sense that we need new skills like resilience or flexibility. Our current system is all about academic and analytical skills. with no connection to the future. I think we pay too much attention to formal credentials. We are all obsessed about pimping our resumes, and once we hold our degrees in the hand, we, think, we are all thinking we're now going to make a great career, we're entitled to it. But that might have been the case in the 1980s, but definitely not in 2015. Um, today, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the cold is still. On, on the way, it's the third one, maybe. So we're not entitled to anything uh, these days unless we take full responsibility of, of the outcome of our action. We all need to understand that living in perpetual change will require new attitudes towards learning. Of course we need to learn, but we also need to learn uh, to unlearn old behaviors and to relearn constantly in a, in, a, in a constant manner. So what are we going to do about this? We need new formats, we need to change the way how we teach, and we need to change what we teach. Instead of teaching students how to administer business, we should teach them how to do business. Instead of teaching them or boring them to death with the life of Sigmund Freud, we should actually tell them how to design a beautiful career. So the challenge is that we 
have to overcome this middle class values and we throw this old concept of career overboard and encourage people to be more entrepreneurial. So don't wait for our society to change as a whole. Don't wait for politics to change. They still have a lot of difficulties figuring out what's going on. And don't change, uh, wait for the universities. They will hold on to their possessions as long as possible. So you might all know the famous quote of Benjamin Franklin, an investment in knowledge uh, pays the best interest. Let's reframe that uh, quote a little bit and say an investment in mindset pays the best knowledge. Thank you very much.